Hey guys, welcome back to CAD class, where this week we're going to be continuing on with our reprinted series, where we're going to be working on the hardware that's going to hold our entire 3D printer together. These bolts are going to be the first hurdle in this project, because if the hardware that holds the entire frame together don't work, then it's kind of game over before we even begin. Now, we've got three problems to overcome if we want to get some successful bolts. The printing orientation, the torque sealing, and the multiple sized bolts. Now, the big issue with 3D printed bolts is that beginners will often put them in the vertical orientation because it just kind of looks right. The problem is that the cross-sectional area of their bolt is absolutely tiny. And this is really important for 3D printing because cross-sectional area is where the strength of the print comes from. If you take this M5 bolt that was printed vertically, you can see you can snap it pretty easily in just one hand. But if you go back into your slicer and rotate it into the horizontal orientation, then the cross-sectional area becomes significantly larger and the strength massively increases. Now that the print is in the horizontal orientation, the problem is now not strength, but quality of prints. As you can probably imagine, printing it in this orientation is not super ideal. It's got all this air underneath it, which needs to be supported with support material. And even though support material is specifically designed to be removed easily, it's still famous for leaving a pretty terrible surface quality. That's because with support material, there's actually negatives that hurt you in both ways. If there's a large air gap in between the top of the support material and the underside of the model, then it does make it easier to remove the support material, but it gives you a certain area where your printed part can droop, giving you a terrible print quality. If you minimize that air gap to try and give you a better surface quality, then it means your support material is going to be adhered to the model so well that it's going to take so much effort to remove it and it's still going to leave behind some crumbs of plastic. Going back to the bolts, this is now a magnified issue because we're not just dealing with a nice flat surface, we're now dealing with a pointy threaded surface. This is going to leave us with a pretty terrible surface quality, but because we're actually printing threads, having all those extra crumbs of material can actually build up stress as we're tightening down the bolt and can potentially shear it and break it. This is just one of the problems that we're going to have to solve in CAD a little bit later in this video. Problem two is the torque sealing of these bolts, or what is the maximum amount of force you can put on it and have these bolts not break. And spoiler alert, 3D printed bolts, not that great. But that problem is literally the ethos of this entire series, trying to figure out all the different ways that you can design around 3D printing to make it still as close to the original metal bolts as possible. To solve this problem, we're gonna be designing a bolt with two solutions in mind, increasing the diameter and increasing the infill percentage. To add just a little proper engineering to this discussion, we can say that over tightening this bolt will shear off under a stressor called torsion. This breakage happens from quite a few factors like length, applied torque, material properties, and radius. For this series, anytime I need to print some hardware, I'm going to be using this special type of PLA called Tough PLA or PLA+. Those types of plastics are essentially just brand names for different alloys of plastic where you're mixing different types of plastic together or with additives to increase the strength or toughness but that still comes with quite a few challenges. As we'll go over in the next video in this series, the frame of our 3D printer is gonna be made in this Prusament Galaxy PETG that was very kindly sent to us by the 3D Prusa research team. Now, because we have a set material, we actually have to change around some of the other factors in this model so we can compensate for the weaker material. So one thing that we can do immediately is increase the radius of our bolts. In an ideal world, I would love to increase the diameter of these bolts even more to increase the strength, but unfortunately these bolts are going to be passing through some 20mm wide aluminum extrusions, and that is my limiting factor. The other factor that I can change is to increase the infill percentage to 100% so it is totally solid plastic and there's no voids inside it. Now, this may seem like a bit of an obvious thing to do, but weirdly enough, this is a bit of a misconception in the 3D printing community. One thing that I see all the time with beginners that are getting into 3D printing is that they think if you want a really strong part, then you want to increase the percentage of your 3D print. I've seen people print just a normal desktop figurine with 80% infill because 
they just think they need it. And unfortunately, that's just not true. The strength of a 3D printed part comes from the number of walls or perimeters, not the percentage of infill. If you bump up your wall line count from something like four to eight, then it means that you're gonna get a significantly stronger part than something that is mostly plastic on the inside. The advantage to this is that not only do you have a stronger part, but it means it's printing with less plastic and it's gonna be printing even faster. For my project, because I need these bolts to be as strong as possible, I'm gonna be increasing the wall count to eight and having 100% infill on the inside. Finally, problem number three is that I've got a ton of different varying sizes of bolts inside the Ender 3. Some of the smaller bolts go all the way down to an M2, where the largest bolts are gonna be M5s. If you're new to kit builds, then that M in front of all of the bolts means that it is a metric bolt. So M5 means that the diameter is about five millimeters, but in reality, it's closer to 4.8. Similarly, if you go down the M2 bolt, its diameter of the thread is about two millimeters. So pretty, pretty small. Now these M2 bolts are actually so tiny that it's not feasible at all to replicate them with an FDM 3D printer. But luckily for us, all of the M2 bolts are actually passing through the electronics such as the PSU and the motherboard on our 3D printer. And those are components that I can't change anyway. Therefore, the rules allow me to keep those bolts. But for the M3, M4, and M5 bolts, I'm gonna be doubling the diameter of the thread and hopefully that's gonna be a success. Essentially, the outcome of doubling them is that the M3 becomes an M6, the M4 becomes an M8, and these M5s become M10 bolts. Now these M5 bolts are pretty beefy and they're actually gonna work just fine. And I can kind of see the M4 bolts working as well, but the M3 bolts that we're gonna be making a little bit later in this project, uh, I'm not 100% sure they're gonna work, but we're gonna give it a go. Now that we have our game plan, we can now start on the CAD portion. The design of this bolt is gonna look pretty similar to the parametric bolt we have in our book, Mastering Fusion 360. So if you haven't picked up a copy, you can check it out on Amazon, or you can download the entire book for free on our website at cadclass.org, where you can check it out in the description below. Parametric design is the idea of applying names and values to each of the dimensions in your design. So instead of your model just being a box, for example, you can say that the width is 50 millimeters, the length is 100, and the height is 25. And as soon as you change these parameters, then the model updates automatically. So in this design, we're gonna be modeling all the dimensions to be driven parametrically. So as soon as I want a different size bolt for the project, I don't need to remake it from scratch. I just need to change around a couple values and it will automatically give me the exact new bolt that I need. To start off, we're gonna be making the M5 by 45 bolts that essentially hold the bottom of the frame and the base together. I'm gonna to be starting off this project by making a new sketch on the front plane where I can type L for the line tool start from the origin and make the top half of a bolt profile. I'm only gonna be making the top half because this is a rotationally symmetric part. So I can essentially just take this profile and revolve it around that bottom line. Now for this sketch, if I want to dimension the length of the head and the length of the thread, that's pretty easy. But if I want to dimension the diameter of the head and the diameter of the thread, that's gonna be a little tricky because it's only gonna be able to set the radius. So to fix that, I'm gonna be selecting the axis of revolution and then clicking on the center line in the sketch palette. This means that when I type D for dimension and I click this top line and then that axis, I can now dimension the entire diameter and not just the radius. Now I said I wanted all of these dimensions to be parametric, so I'm gonna show you guys a really quick trick. I'm gonna be clicking normally to set my dimension but instead of just typing in 15 millimeters, which will be the final dimension, I'm actually gonna be typing in the parametric name. So I can say head underscore diam uh, equals 15 millimeters. And as soon as I hit okay, the diameter of the head is now a parametrically driven parameter. And you can double check this by going into your change parameters section. And you can see I have my head diameter 15 millimeters already built into it. I can continue on by dimensioning this head length to be head underscore L equals 10 millimeters. Again, I'm going to be 
setting the length of the thread, I can just call it thread underscore L equals 45. That's for the M5 by 45. And then I'll set the diameter of that thread again to be thread underscore D equals 10. Now that my sketch is fully defined, I'm going to be finishing this sketch, going to revolve. It's automatically selected my profile because I only have one profile and it selected the center line as the axis of revolution. This looks good, so I can just click OK. To change the appearance of the bolt to make it look a little bit more similar to the final product, I'm going to type A for appearance and then drag on aluminum polished. This is one of my favorite appearances to put on bolts. To make the hexagon at the very end of our bolt, I'm going to be creating a sketch of a polygon and then extrude cutting that into our head. So let's go ahead and create a sketch on the head of our bolt. Go into create, polygon, circumscribed polygon, click on the origin, pull away, and then click. And what you'll want to notice is that I've put the very tip of the polygon facing upwards. In fact, I'm going to add on a horizontal vertical constraint onto the side of that, which is going to be making printing a lot easier. I'm going to be setting the width of this polygon to be 8.4 millimeters, clicking finish sketch, getting an isometric view, and then extrude cutting this into the head of our bolt. Now, very specifically, I want to be typing in negative H to give us our head length plus three. And the reason is that this will add in three millimeters between the underside of our head and the bottom of our hexagonal hole. This will give me just a little bit of meat so our bolt doesn't fall apart. Then I can add on a thread to our cylinder because this is a 10 millimeter diameter part. As soon as I click on that surface, it's gonna give me an M10 bolt. Currently, it is just uh, a decal on the surface of our bolt. Uh, not gonna be super duper helpful for 3D printing. So I'm gonna make sure that modeled is checked. And when I click okay, you can see that this is going to be giving us a perfect M10 metric thread. Now, because 3D printing and machining are very different on the spectrum of tolerances and specific sizes, this isn't going to be exactly perfect. In fact, if I try to put in this bolt into a perfectly 3D printed hole, it's not going to fit very well. So I need to add in just a little bit of tolerance and that's going to be using the offset face tool. I'm going to go into modify, click offset face, then I can click all four edges of a thread. That's going to be either side of the tooth the top and then the valley, and I'm gonna say negative 0.2 millimeters. That's gonna remove just a little bit of material, but it's gonna make it much easier and much stronger when I actually screw it into our frame. One of the weird features about 3D printing bolts is that the very end of it is perfectly flat, and this is a terrible design for a 3D printed section. In fact, I actually want to cut away a little bit of a chamfer at the very top of our thread. Unfortunately, I'm actually not able to go back a couple steps, chamfer that edge, and then put a thread on later. I need to make a revolute triangular cut to remove this end, which makes it much easier to screw in that bolt. To make our revolved triangular cut, I'm going to be starting off with a new sketch on the front plane where I'm going to be drawing a simple right triangle with our line tool. Now this isn't a very big bolt so this doesn't really need to be all that wide. It can just be about 2.5 millimeters. That's going to be perfectly fine for this project. I'm going to place it near the beginning of our thread. And because this is a parametric bolt, I can actually define its location on our plane using our parametric values. So I can say that the distance to the right from the origin is going to be the head length plus the thread length. That's going to be 55 millimeters. You can see that edge is now black, which means it is fully defined and lined up with the very end of our thread. Then I can say the vertical height to the origin, that is just going to be our thread diameter divided by two. That's going to give us our radius. There we go. 
Now I can finish that sketch and then revolve that profile about the central axis. Because I know that this cylinder was revolved about the same axis, I don't actually need to click on anything other than this cylindrical face. Because this revolution is actually cutting into our bolt, you can see it's automatically detected that and turned it red, which means it is a cutting operation. Now, the reason we do this is actually a little bit harder to see, and that is because the trailing edge or the beginning of our thread is now disappearing smaller and smaller and smaller into this chamfer. This makes it significantly easier to then screw in our bolt. One of the problems that we can now solve is to actually get rid of all the pointy threads on the underside of our bolt. And we're going to be doing this by making a little sketch on the end of our bolt and then cutting off some of the lower portion. So essentially shaving off the underside of the threads. That way we still have the majority of the threads that we can screw in, but it's going to be much easier to print with. I'm going to be doing this by starting off with a brand new sketch on the very end of our bolt where I'm going to be typing C for circle, clicking the origin, pulling it away, and then typing thread diameter as the diameter of the circle. Then I can type L for line and make a connecting line at the very bottom. You'll notice that I want to make sure that it is a horizontal line. We can see that little icon at the very, very bottom in blue. Then I want to make another angled line that again finishes on that circle. Now this bottom point, I'm going to hold down command and then click the origin and then add on a horizontal vertical constraint. That way we know that point at the bottom of the line is exactly at the bottom of our entire circle. Then I can add in a dimension between these two lines of 20 degrees. This is essentially an overhang that I found works really well for all of my printers. That's a 70 degree overhang, which gives me a perfectly fine printing quality. Then I can finish this sketch, type E for extrude, select the two profiles, and normally I would be able to pull this, uh, this profile all the way up to this surface. And I can actually do this in a couple ways. I can type this dimension being the negative thread length, or another way that I can do it is to change the extent type to object and then select the underside of that bolt head. So it knows that this profile is gonna be cutting all the way up to that surface and then stopping. Then I can click okay. I'm also going to be doing a similar operation to the very front of our bolt. So we've got a nice flat portion on that bolt. So it has enough surface area to actually adhere onto our build plate. Then to finish off this bolt, I'm going to go ahead and add some chamfers onto the head of our bolt. I can just click this cylinder, which will add a chamfer to either side. And then I want to add it to this outer face, which makes putting the hex wrench into that hexagon just a little bit easier and we can make this 0.5 millimeters. It's not going to be very big, it's just going to soften over some of the sharper corners. Then we can go ahead and export this bolt as an STL. So I'm going to right click on the component, click save as mesh and then click OK. I'm going to be slicing this model in Cura but throughout this series I'm going to be jumping in between Cura and Prusa Slicer. They're both incredibly powerful softwares and sometimes one program has some really fantastic tools that the other one doesn't and vice versa. I don't really have much of a preference, but Cura is going to be the best for me for adding really nice, simple, small support material. So I'm going to go ahead and open and import this bolt onto my workspace. I'm going to go ahead and slice up this bolt. You can see just how it looks on the inside. When I preview this, you can see that I've got my support material on the underside of my bolt. This is the flat section that we cut out on the very underside of our bolt head. And as you can see, it's just adding a small amount of support material until it branches off just to the underside of the threads or the beginning of our threads. Then we continue upwards. We can see that we have that solid infill. And then as we go higher and higher and higher, what I want you guys to notice is that we have the hexagon in that vertical orientation with the point on top. This way we don't have any flat horizontal section that would give us any drooping or bridging. This way we only have to print supports under the threads and nowhere else. This is going to be a pretty solid print and hopefully it will be incredibly strong. Now after printing these bolts, there's something that I noticed that's actually not good at all. The threads are way too tiny and it's not going to be effective for the project that I'm working on. 
The problem is that the resolution of this technology of FDM 3D printing is just nowhere near what you can get from machining a metal bolt. And when you want a really strong bolt in 3D printing, you want to increase the heftiness of that thread. So instead of having an isometric thread, we're going to be bumping that up to an Acme thread, which is a really meaty, solid thread that you find on really huge machines like manual mills. Coming back to Fusion, I'm going to be changing the threads by going into the timeline, the bottom left hand corner, double clicking it, going into the dialog box and changing the isometric profile into Acme screw threads. When I click OK and check out the front view, you can see my threads are significantly chunkier and that's going to give me a better success of a bolt actually working. This second version of the bolts are now giving me a much better chance of success and because I made this parametrically and I do need four of the M5 by 25 bolts, I'm going to go back into Fusion, click on my Change Parameters tool and I'm going to change the thread length from 45 to 25. And as soon as I click OK, you can see that my model will automatically update and it will still keep that revolved cut. Then I can go back into my component, click Save as Mesh, and then save this as an M5 by 25 bolt and get this sent off to the printer. These bolts are now looking fantastic and ready to go for the next portion of this series where we're going to be building out the frame of our Ender 3 completely out of 3D printed plastic. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss on the next installment of the reprinted series where we convert a Ender 3 3D printer into a completely self 3D printed replica. If you guys are interested in learning more about CAD modeling or 3D printing, then you can check out our full courses about the topics at cadclass.org, or you can check out our book on Amazon, Mastering Fusion 360. We also have the entire book in PDF in the description below, completely for free. Thanks so much guys, and we'll see you in the next episode.